right, good morning everybody. Jason here with AV Pro Edge. Thank you for being here for today's webinar. We're gonna do something pretty cool today, a little different than what nor we normally do. We're gonna talk a little bit about some of our new commercial products that should fit really, really well in a classroom or a conference type environment. So let's get started. So a little bit about us, AV Pro Global. If you're new to our webinars and you've seen some of our stuff before, Thank you for returning. Uh, for those of you who might be new to the company, just wanted to cover a couple things and talk a little bit about uh, a little bit about AV Pro and, and what we do. Uh, we are a manufacturer of HDMI connectivity products and HDMI test equipment. Uh, we make a long line of HDMI and HD base T matrix switches, HDMI and HD base T extenders, distribution amplifiers. Uh, we're now making some, uh, some really killer HDMI cables, uh, tools for integrators to help their installations go a lot smoother and for troubleshooting and things like that. And of course, HDMI testing and video calibration equipment. You know, we come from a long line of home theater and, and installation and, and AV. And, you know, we just want to make products that are easy for the integrators to use. And, and uh, you know, we want to eliminate the headaches and the problems that some of you see in the field. And that's really what we're here for. Uh, we've been around since about 2011. We started off as an online AV pro store where we were um, selling lots of uh, AV equipment. And, and we got into test equipment and extenders and and it kind of snowballed from there. Um, our, our goal for you guys is to uh, you know, make a simple product that's easy to use and nice and reliable. Um, you know, we, uh, we try to stay ahead of the game. We've been doing uh, HDMI 2.0 since about 2015. We stay ahead of the curve when it comes to new technology such as 4K, HDR, and, and we're looking forward in the future already for HDMI 2.1. A couple of things that make us unique, uh, we do own our own manufacturing plant in Shenzhen, China. We do also own a 20 gigahertz, really high-end, nice Keysight oscilloscope uh, that lets us analyze signals and cables and inputs and outputs and really lets us see deep down uh, what's going on with some of these signals. Uh, we have lots of uh, customers all over the world. We, we sell stuff to NASA, Sony, Best Buy, uh, and of course, integrators uh, out there every day. Uh, got a really great tech support department. If you've ever had any experience with our tech support department, um, I'm, I'm sure it went great. If not, feel free to give us a call. We're, we're here to help anytime. Uh, our products do come with a 10-year no BS warranty, meaning that if you have a problem with one of our products and we can't resolve it over the phone with tech support, we're going to replace that product for you. Uh, we're going to get that taken care of, and we're going to uh, we're going to back that product up for for 10 years. Uh, again, like I mentioned before, we've been ahead of the game with 18 gig and HDMI 2.2.2.0, uh, and looking forward to 2.1. Um, we do have some proprietary technology, which is really cool. Uh, something called ICT that really helps the picture. Uh, when some of those signals do have to be compressed, uh, you know, compression is always a dirty word, but if you do it well enough, you can hide it and, and you really can't see it. And somebody like me who has a deep history with video calibration and a pretty picky eye, um, you know, I've looked at our products plenty of times using the ICT technology and it looks very, very good. It's, it's, it's awesome compression technology. And we're, of course, an HD based T contributing member. We're going to talk a lot about a lot about some of that stuff today. A little bit about me, uh, most of you, I, I recognize some of the names on the webinar. Again, thanks for being here. My name is Jason Dustel. I'm with AV Pro Edge and Meridio. Uh, I've been doing installations and home theater and, and playing around in this space for quite a long time. Uh, we teach ISF classes. We teach AV Pro Academy classes. Uh, so most of you have probably seen, seen our webinars before and, and some of the stuff we've done over the past two years. If not, feel free to uh, check out our YouTube page. We've got all of our webinars we've done in the past. We, we record them. And uh, we like to have those available for you guys for reference. So uh, feel free to check out our YouTube page, some of the older webinars if you'd like to. And of course, if you follow us on Facebook and all the social media sites, uh, you know, we let everybody know when there's going to be webinars and, and when there's new content available. A little bit of um, housekeeping here before we get going. Um, we've got Tom Devine watching the chat box. Hi, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Uh, he's going to be answering some questions throughout the presentation. If you do have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to type those into the question box. Uh, I'll take a peek at the question box every now and again throughout the presentation. We'll see if there's any questions I can answer right off the bat, uh, but Tom's going to try to get to those questions as best as he can. Uh, I'll, leave a little, I'll leave a little bit of time at the end for some Q&A, so if you guys do have any questions that we don't get to um, you know, throughout the presentation, we'll, we'll look at some of those at the end and, and hopefully get those answered for you. So. Let's talk about some 4K video distribution for classrooms and conference rooms. So uh, a big thing that we have to point out right away is, you know, we're not quite to a point yet to where all connections are universal and anybody can just plug anything into anything. We still have a variety of connectors 
and it's very, very important and essential to be able to recognize those connectors. That's going to help you design the system. That's going to help you teach your end users how to use the system. So we're going to be talking mostly today about uh, about the most common ones. We're going to talk about HDMI, of course, uh, Thunderbolt, which is a, a still a pretty popular connector. We still see DisplayPort quite a bit. USB-C seems to be sort of the newest thing. We're seeing USB-C now on a lot of laptops for uh, video transmission and charging and things like that. And of course, there's still going to be some VGA stuff out there. So just you know, being able to recognize these connections, got a few pictures of them down at the bottom. I'm sure most of you here, probably well, all of you, are very familiar with what these connectors look like. But uh, the number one thing we do have to establish is that you know we are going to have different products we're talking about today, and they're going to have different connector types. And you know, you want to make sure that um, we're getting the the right product for that customer and and for what the job entails. Okay, so here's some of the problems that we see in classrooms. And you know, this isn't anything you guys are new to. If you've dealt with classrooms and conference rooms and huddle rooms and things like that before where people are bringing their own device and, and cell phones and, and, and laptops and things, you know, these are some of the problems that we, we always run into. Uh, the instructor comes in with a device that does not have the same connector as what the system uses. We see that a lot. Uh, then next thing you know, everybody's digging through their backpacks and trying to track down somebody that might have an adapter. And we wanted to get get away from that kind of problem. Uh, sometimes you have picture but no sound. Again, uh, you know, it's great if you're watching a PowerPoint, but if you have some embedded video in the PowerPoint or some music you want to play, you also want to have sound as well, of course. Um, sometimes you'll see this problem too. This is always a funny one to me. The sound will play through the device's speakers, not through the audio system. We've seen lots of um, conference room type, classroom type projectors that have speakers in them. And instead of the sound playing through the PA system, which is what it was intended for, the sound ends up playing through the little tiny speaker on the projector, and it always, uh, always, <laughs> always kind of gives me a chuckle when that happens. Um, you know, you've got this nice big audio system, and the sound's playing out of this tiny little speaker on the projector. The other thing we see a lot of times too is the instructor will plug their device in, but they have no idea how the system works, so they have to call somebody in, maybe one of the engineers or one of the AV people from the building, and someone always has to come help. Um, we always see that the the image never fits the screen properly. Maybe it's zoomed out too far or zoomed in too far. Maybe the keystone is being used and just all kinds of different problems that we're, we're seeing in classroom and, and conference room type environments. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of times where you have a mix of the teacher or, or the professor, if you're maybe in a college type situation, uh, maybe a student trying to also share their screen. Uh, we see this a lot. Um, you know, maybe your output on your laptop is 4K, but the system is only 1080p. Uh, another problem that we run into a lot where you might have no picture or, or sound, but no picture or no picture at all or no sound at all. And this just ends up being a big waste of time for everybody. You know, people are there to learn and, and they're on a tight time schedule. So, you know, in a one hour class or in a one hour meeting, you know, we don't have time to fiddle around with the AV system for 15 minutes of that hour. So we want you guys to be able to get in, get out, get the system installed, teach people how to use it, make it super easy, and stop the truck rolls. Uh, we know how expensive it is to do a troubleshooting call and to roll a truck out to a job. And every time you roll that truck out for a troubleshooting call, especially if it's um, something that's not under your control, it's just a big waste of time. And a lot of times you end up with unhappy customers and you guys are losing money as you're going out and doing these troubleshooting calls. So again, stuff we want to get away from. Um, we see a variety of connectors, like I mentioned before. Uh, we have MacBook Pros that are doing Thunderbolt, but the system is HDMI. Uh, maybe it's an older system with VGA, and the uh, teacher is trying to plug in a, a HDMI or, or a Thunderbolt or DisplayPort type of connector. Um, and what about the newer type of connectors too? Mini DisplayPort, we do see that on some products. And uh, we do also, like I said before, with USB-C, that seems to be kind of the newer type of connector that everybody's gravitating towards. Uh, it'll probably be a while before everybody switches over, but we're seeing it on more and more products now. Uh, any brand new laptop now pretty much is going to have USB-C on it. Tablets, USB-C. So we're getting to a point now where um, you know all these different connector types matter quite a bit. So uh, you know some of the solutions that I'm going to talk about today, uh, a lot of them are going to have something to do with HD-based T. Uh, we've done webinars on HD-based T before, and we have plenty of products in our AV Pro Edge line that work with HD-based T. Uh, we're, we've partnered with them for many years, and it's a very good, reliable, stable, uh, nice-looking uh, uh, technology. Um, so in our products that we're going to talk about today, a lot of them are going to have HD Base T involved. And really, if, if you're new to HD Base T, I just want to do a quick uh, review of what it is. Uh, when you have long video runs, especially in a situation where the cable is HDMI or the infrastructure is HDMI, um, when you run an HDMI cable more than about 20 or 30 feet or so in most cases, uh, you do run into signal problems. 
So HDBase-T is a great little company. They came up with an idea that let's run category cable, which can go much longer distances than HDMI. And it's our job as a manufacturer to build a product that can convert the HDMI signal over to something that can travel over the HDBase-T, which is typically a category cable. So instead of making long HDMI runs that might be questionable in reliability and things like that, we're gonna run category cable instead. And uh, we're gonna use a, a couple of adapters on either end to adapt from the HDMI over to the category cable. So just a little bit about HDBase-T. And some of our products that we're gonna talk about today are some matrix switches. We've got some wall plate transmitters. Uh, we've got some receivers. So you can make these category runs without having to run extra long HDMI cables or USB cables and things like that. And we do have a couple of accessories, one in particular that I do wanna to mention towards the end of the presentation. So first we're gonna talk about a brand new product. This is the ACCX42 AUHD. This is a classroom slash conference room matrix switch. It is four inputs and two outputs. Uh, if you do need the full 18 gigs with HDMI 2.0, this does support it. Uh, of course, with all the different flavors of HDR. Uh, some of the things that might be really exciting for integrators when it comes to a switch like this is you can do your EDID management at the switch. There's also an audio input and an output. The audio input would be for if somebody has a source that they want to play music, maybe a cell phone, or maybe there's a CD player in the room or something like that. There's also an output, so you can bounce that audio signal from the 42, uh, from the CX42 over to maybe a, uh, you know, a distributed audio system or maybe a PA system. Uh, another cool feature about this switch is that it is auto sensing, meaning that in, if somebody comes in and plugs in their laptop into the system, the, uh, the uh, CX42 is gonna automatically switch over to that correct input and the instructor or whoever's plugging in their laptop doesn't have to do anything. There's also a web-based graphic uh, user interface. So when you're setting the system up and you're setting this switch up in particular, uh, instead of using the buttons on the front, you can log in and do some of your control and some of your setup with the, with the web-based GUI. You can control the switch from the front panel. It does come with an IR remote, but you can also use any of the third-party uh, control systems like uh, Control 4 and Crestron, Savant, RTI, URC, you know, all the big ones, we, we play nice with those guys. Uh, a really cool feature that I really like for a conference room or classroom, you know, think about a case where you might have a really big classroom that you're dealing with. And uh, you know, the instructor might be wearing a, a microphone, maybe a, a lapel mic or something because the room's really big or the class is really big. Um, this particular switch has a really cool feature called auto ducking. So the microphone input is on the switch itself. So when the instructor starts talking, if there's music playing or anything like that, there's a feature called auto ducking. And if you've done live music before or worked in, in, uh, in, in sound reinforcement and, and con concerts and, and front of house sound, this might, be a, 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 this might not be new to you, but there's something called auto ducking. So if the teacher starts talking, they don't have to do anything in, in regards to the volume control. So if they're playing music and they start talking, their voice is automatically gonna be louder than the music. The music will duck down or the music will get quieter so that the, uh, the person talking, uh, everybody can hear them and it's not just loud music and then loud talking on top of that. The music or, or whatever audio is playing will duck underneath the instructor or whoever's talking, which is a really cool feature. Again, it's hands off, it's easy to use. The instructor does not have to do anything special to, to talk. They can just talk and, and do their thing. So we'll take a quick look at a, a connection diagram of, of just a real simple example of what you might see in, in a case you might use the MX42. Um, so down here, it is a four input, two output switch with HD base T. So you may have one of our wall plates. We'll get a little deeper into the wall plates uh, a little bit later in the presentation, but you may have one of these wall plates by a podium. So they could plug in a 4K source into that wall plate. There could be three more 4K sources in the system. Maybe there's a Blu-ray player or another laptop or a media player, but those can all be 4K. Um, there's two outputs. One's gonna be HDMI, which is nice for a hard wire if you're going a short distance to a nice 4K display. Or if you're going a little bit further, maybe there's a, a projector on the ceiling or maybe there's a short throw projector in front of the wall, or maybe there's just a display that's really far away. That's okay, we can still use HD base T for that display. And now we have four inputs and two outputs. Um, there's an optical output here. There's also uh, a uh, left and right analog audio out here as well. So if we are running audio through an amplifier or a PA system, we can either come out of this switch and pull the audio either digitally or analog. 
Uh, the microphone, we kind of mentioned that before with the auto ducking, that's going to plug into the system as well. And then your control system, whether you have Savant, Control 4, URC, uh, you know, whatever the case might be, you've got all your controls here as well. So it's a very simple little device. It's pretty much plug and play for the most part. There's not a lot of configuration that you have to do. We could even pass IR signals from one device to another if needed. So if you do need to get signal up to that, uh, if you do need to get like an IR signal up to a projector, for example, you, you can do that here as well too. So this is just a real simple example, just uh, very common of what you might see a uh, use case for the, for the uh, CX42. Now if we go up a model, we also have an ACCX62 AUHD, which is very similar, uh, but with the 62, instead of having four inputs, you actually have six. And uh, this will be uh, mostly designed uh, Thinking of a classroom or a situation where you have more inputs, uh, this is really the reason to get the 62 over the 42 is it has two more inputs. The features are all about the same with the auto ducking with the microphone and the IR pass throughs and the audio outputs and things like that. We just have one, uh, I'm sorry, we just have uh, two extra outputs on this, um, on this uh, I'm sorry, two extra inputs on this device. So the 42 is a four input, two output. The 62 is a six input, two output. Now what's cool about this is, you know, think about the size of your classrooms and think about how many students might be there or think about your meeting rooms and how big those might be. Uh, you, might, you might have plenty of cases where you have a, a, a need for uh, up to six sources. Uh, maybe there's a case where you have uh, different wall plates around the room and anybody at any time could be plugging in uh, their laptop or, or their media player or whatever source they might be using. Uh, sometimes you have these really long tables in conference rooms. So you might have uh, wall plates or HDMI grommets uh, in the table itself, and you might have multiple people around the table that might want to plug in a device. So plenty of reasons to, to go up to the 62 if you do need more inputs. That's, that's the biggest reason. But if we take a look at this diagram, it's very similar to what we looked at before. Uh, like I said, it's just the difference is, is now we have six inputs and, and uh, two outputs instead of four in inputs and two outputs. So a little bit about the uh, ACCX62. Now, there's another piece that I want to cover um, that's pretty new to us. We were showing this off at Infocom and Cedia this year, uh, as well as the other products. This is a multi-purpose 25 by 2 uh, audio amplifier with HDMI. Uh, this is the ACCX100 RAMP. Um, this is a multi-purpose uh, uh, piece of equipment that you can use in multiple different environments. Uh, you can use something like this in a classroom or a conference room or, or any kind of meeting room. Um, we do have line in, microphone in. HDMI and HD base T, uh, just like the other products. Um, if you are passing an HDMI signal through this uh, through this device and you want to pull the audio out, uh, don't worry about this piece uh, ruining your 4K. This is 18 gig HDMI 2.0 capable. Uh, another feature that we put into the ACCX100 is uh, a scaler, and this is very important. Think of a time where you've uh, done a system to where there's you know multiple 4K TVs. And there's one 1080p TV still uh, in, a, in another part of the room, or maybe it's an older projector. Uh, we can scale the signal down to 1080p if we need to, but we can also go the opposite too. So if we need to take that signal from 1080p up to 4K to make the 4K TVs happy, we can do that here in the ACCX100. It's all built in. Also, much like the other uh, two devices that we just covered, the, the, the uh, CX42 and the CX62, uh, are the uh, the built-in EDID management. There's uh, built-in EDIDs for uh, lots of different situations and lots of different types of displays and, and different resolutions and different frame rates. You can also copy EDID like you can with some of our other uh, extenders and matrix switches and things like that. This particular piece also supports ARC, supports ARC. So if you are running uh, maybe a thumb drive or a slideshow with some music on it on the TV, or maybe you're accessing YouTube from the TV or something like that uh, to show somebody a video, then uh, we can use the ARC functionality in the ramp and, and get the audio back into the audio system. Something else that we hear a lot about out in the field is audio delay. Uh, the customer calls up and says the lips don't match up with the voice. We've all heard this for many years and, and it's a problem that you can fix with this, with this piece. There's a built-in audio delay, so if there are any problems with the lips not matching up to the voice, then it's, a, it's an easy fix. Uh, we do also have an audio output for additional amplifiers, an audio matrix switch, maybe a PA system. Now what's a little bit different on this piece other than the uh, 42 and the 62, this does have a microphone input. But instead of the auto ducking, like what we see in the other two pieces, these do have separate gain controls. So you do have to do a little bit of setup, uh, setting those levels for the gain and the uh, for the gain of the audio that's playing through the through the uh, system. And then you also have a gain for the microphone as well. So it doesn't have the auto ducking built in, but it does have a microphone 
input and, and a, a teacher or a professor or somebody who's leading a meeting can certainly use a microphone with this piece as well. Uh, and, and similar to the other pieces, we have front panel controls. You can use IR, you can control it over IP and uh, also RS-232 if needed. So we'll take a quick look at uh, just a simple diagram of the of the AXC, I'm sorry, the ACCX100 ramp and sort of a connection diagram. We'll get a quick look here of the back of the unit so you can see the microphone gain knob, the voiceover knob. Uh, this is for the instructor and for how loud their voice is going to be over the music when they do uh, decide to talk. Uh, EDID management dial is right here. There's different preset EDIDs. Um, there's several of them on here. You can just rotate this dial in, in our quick start guides and instruction manuals. Uh, you know, we give you a key of which uh, which dial the position should be in based on what EDID you want. So real simple setup for there for the EDID management. Uh, we have a laptop over here plugged into a, an HDMI wall plate. We're going to use the HD base T input on the CX100. Then we're going to send audio and video out to this 4K TV. And we're going to send um, audio only out to a pair of speakers that might be in the room. Uh, so you can see how this is kind of an all uh, multi-purpose, all-in-one sort of sort of uh, piece that will not only let you show audio video, let you connect audio video throughout the classroom or the conference room, but it also allow you to hook up a microphone and also allow you to hook up some speakers. So this really could be like the only thing in a classroom uh, that's running the classroom other than maybe some wall plates or something. But you know, without the extra need for external amplifiers for the speakers and things like that, this is could be uh, definitely be an all-in-one piece that. Uh, that might be a single box solution to, to fix a lot of problems. So I do want to talk about the wall plates a little bit. Uh, we do have a couple of new ones and, and just wanted to go over some of the features and benefits of those. Um, there's four of them that we're going to talk about today. Now these four wall plates, depending on the uh, situation that you might be in, you can buy these wall plates individually, um, but you can also buy them in a kit as well with the, with the receiver. It just depends on what the situation calls for. So if you're doing a wall plate with uh, one of the CX42s or CX62s, uh, um, you know we can use the um, the the unit itself as the HD base T receiver. So there might be some cases where you need a kit with the receiver on the other end. There might be some cases where you just need to buy the wall plate because you're using one of our pieces as the receiver. Or maybe you have a projector or an AVR that has HD base T built in. We see a lot of that nowadays. So you could potentially use a wall plate. Uh, plug in HDMI to the wall plate, and then a category cable connects the wall plate up to the projector. You know that's that's another in, uh, instance where you could where you could uh, save a little bit of space and a little bit of time as well. So the first one, uh, first I want to talk about just a really simple. I kind of just glazed over it a, a moment ago, but a really simple diagram of how the uh, the Conflex wall plates work. Uh, this is HD base T, so we're going to do a little bit of conversion here. So here we have a computer that's plugged in HDMI to a wall plate. From, from the wall plate to one of the AV Pro Edge receivers, we've got a category cable. The category cable can be up to 100 meters in most cases. It just depends on which receiver you buy to go with the system. Uh, you can go 40 meters, 70 meter, and as long as 100 meters if you really need to. So we go HDMI from the computer to the wall plate. We've got a category cable from the wall plate over to the receiver, and then the receiver is just a simple HDMI connection back to the TV. All of our wall plates work like this. So the wiring is going to be the same regardless of the type of wall plate, except for on this end and this end, you may have a different type of cable depending on what the computer may have or what the display may have. So this is just a really simple setup and a really simple diagram of how all the wall plates work. Okay, the first one we're going to talk about, ACCXWP, HDMO slash T. This is an HDMI to HD base T transmitter. It's HDMI 2.0, a full 18 gigs with HDR support. Um, if we're going um, 1080p, you can go as far as 100 meters. If you're going 4K, you can go as long as 70 meters. So you've got plenty of room to play with there in, in most cases. This does, sit in the, this does fit in a normal single gang uh, LV1 wall plate. So you don't have to do anything special with the wall plates or anything like that. It's just a standardized single gang wall plate. Uh, this unit itself, you can power it. There is a, a USB on the back if you need it, but nine times out of 10, that's not needed because since this is HD base T, we can power the transmitter with the receiver. So no local power needed. It's literally a matter of screwing the wall plate into the wall and connecting a category cable to it, and that's it. Uh, another cool thing about it is auto sensing. So if somebody does plug their laptop into the HDMI port here on the switch, or I'm sorry, on the transmitter, then the transmitter will power up and send signal. You know, the, the person using the system doesn't have to know anything or do anything. They just plug it in and it goes. 
The next one we'll take a look at is uh, very similar. It is uh, HDMI 2.0 with 18 gigs, just like the unit we looked at before. The difference is on this device, this is ACCXWPMDPT, and the DP there is for mini display port. So if you do have somebody with maybe a Mac or, or uh, maybe a computer that's more geared towards photography or there's just some reason to use DisplayPort, uh, this is a signal sensing, uh, automatically signal sensing switch, uh, or wall plate rather. So if somebody's plugged in HDMI and then somebody plugs in DisplayPort, the switching will happen automatically. Uh, if somebody just leaves an HDMI plugged in all the time, then it'll, it'll uh, default to that all the time. But if somebody plugs in a new device, it'll switch over uh, that device. There's also an input button on the front, so if you do need to change the two inputs manually, you could always do that, but being auto-sensing, you normally don't have to, you can just plug it in and go. So again, the instructor, the professor, whoever's giving the presentation doesn't have to do anything special, they just plug it in and, and, and let her rip. Um, it does look like there's a couple of questions that came in, but it looks like, Tom, you're on top of them. Thank you so much. Um, there's one question in here that I do want to take a look at. It says, how long HDMI cables do you recommend for uh, CXWP series other than the T, uh, and other TX and RX? So with HDMI cables, we know that, you know, they do get a little sketchy after about, you know, 30 feet or so. It really depends on the quality of the cable and, and the gauge of the copper that's in it and things like that. But we like to keep it, you know, 20 feet or so or shorter. Um, you know, if you've heard any of our webinars before, we've actually talked before about how in some cases an HDMI cable can actually be too short. Uh, so if you have some of these little half meter or one and a half meter jumpers for HDMI and you do have some problems with the signal syncing and things like that, one troubleshooting step that I always like to do is swap out those little half meter jumpers for a two meter cable. And that does, believe it or not, that does tend to solve a lot of problems. But, you know, I like to be between two meters and maybe 10 meters when it comes to HDMI. Now, of course, if you're using our bullet train HDMI cables, um, you know, we have some that are, uh, they're called AOC cables, active optical. So if uh, you do take a look at those cables, maybe on our website, we've mentioned them plenty of times on, on different webinars, but uh, what makes those cables unique is they do have fiber inside of them. So the fiber is responsible for all of the audio and the video. Uh, so we can go much longer distances with those AOC cables. In fact, we showed a 100 meter AOC cable at uh, at Cedia this year, and we were demoing it, and it, it was really cool. So uh, I like to be, you know, anywhere from two meters, uh, you know, and I don't want to say that those half meter and one and a half meter jumpers never work. Of course, they work in a lot of cases, but in most cases, I do like to be, you know, two meters or so uh, to, you know, again, sky's the limit. Depends on the quality of the cable. But uh, okay, good, good question. Thanks for asking. Okay, so we talked about this one a little bit, uh, the mini display port wall plate with the auto sensing, and now we can move on. And we'll look at this uh, this wall plate. This is ACCX WP. Uh, by the way, uh, our model numbers, we try to keep these very easy for you guys. Uh, CX is Confrex. You know, this is our line of, of uh, conference room and, and classroom uh, options. So we've got wall plate, Confre uh, Confrex, wall plate, and then VGA transmitter. So there's our model number uh, for this particular device. The HDMI on this is just like the other guys, is HDMI 2.0 with 18 gigs. Uh, now, uh, what we added on this particular wall plate is for anybody who's maybe using an older computer or they have VGA uh, on a device, we've got VGA here for all of the video, and then we do have a 3.5 millimeter plug here for the audio. So if somebody is playing a presentation on their computer and it is an older style VGA, they can run a VGA cable to the wall plate. They can also run a, you know, most likely a 3.5 millimeter audio cable to the wall plate. And now they can get audio and video up to the projector or out through uh, throughout the room. Uh, again, just like the others, this is powered by the receiver. So you just need to make the connection of the category cable on the back. And you can power, uh, can power the wall plate with the receiver. And just like the others, this is also auto sensing. So if somebody is plugged in VGA and then somebody comes along and plugs in HDMI, the unit will switch over to HDMI automatically. But if you do need to do some manual switching, there is a button on the front, just like the others. Okay, and then last but not least, this is our newest one. Um, this is the USB-C wall plate. Uh, we've got Confrex, wall plate, USB-C, and then transmitter, T for transmitter. Uh, this is, of course, HDMI 2.0, 18 gigs. Uh, the new connector here is a USB-C 3.1 10 gig video USB. Now, it's very, very important to point out here. Um, I've got USB-C on my cell phone. 
Um, I've got USB-C on a tablet at home, and I just want to point out that not all USB-C cables are the same. In most cases, USB-C cables just do charging. So when you're going to get into the new world of USB-C with laptops and tablets and transmitting video, it's very, very important, important to point out here that we, you have to make sure that you're using a USB-C cable that transmits video. Luckily, it's really easy to tell the difference between a charging cable and one that can pass video. The ones that can pass video are always labeled USB-C 3.1. Those are the ones that you're going to want to look at and, and look for when you're, when you're uh, you know, looking for the USB-C cable to hook up the laptop or the computer or the phone to the wall plate itself. I just wanted to call that out. So much like the others, depends on your resolution uh, and, and, and how far you want to go. If you want to go 100 meters, you can do up to 1080p resolution. But if you want to go 4K, you can still go up to 70 meters. Uh, single gang wall plate, just like the others. Um, and, you know, auto sensing. Uh, we wanted to make the wall plates very similar in use because you might have uh, different wall plates for different types of connectors all around the uh, all around the classroom or something. So we wanted to make these very easy to use. We wanted to make them plug and play. You know, the last thing we want is for your customer to call you and say, hey, I'm trying to show a presentation in front of 200 people and I can't get the video to show up. You know, it's a, it's a big headache for everybody and it's a stressful environment. I've been in those environments myself before and everybody's scrambling around. So we wanted to make this stuff as simple as possible. Now, we just talked a lot about some of the transmitters. Let's talk about some of the receivers that you can use for the HD base T. Now, of course, um, of course, you know, we have our standalone receivers, uh, but if you're going to use something like the, the, uh, the, the CX42 or the CX62, or even the audio, the 25 by two, the uh, CX100, the ramp product that we talked about before, those all of course work as receivers. If you're not gonna use uh, any of those receivers in your job, and you just wanna use normal um, standalone receivers, the most popular that we uh, sell with the wall plates is the uh, EX100 UHD. Uh, that's gonna go 100 meters uh, if you need to, and then there's also a 70 meter version as well. But again, I mentioned this before too, you can also use any HD base T compatible product. Maybe there's an AVR, I've seen plenty of those, and I've seen plenty of projectors now that work with HD base T. So again, if you go back to one of the wall plates and run a category cable from the wall plate up to the projector, you don't need another receiver type unit on the projector end. You can just plug the HD base T straight in, which is very convenient. It's one less thing to worry about in the signal chain. Uh, and it's, you know, you're spending less money because there's one less box in the system as well. So if you can do that, do that. It'll, it'll save you some time and it'll eliminate one more point of failure for you too. A little bit easier. I do want to call out one, uh, what I would call an accessory for our Conflex line. Uh, we do have some cases in professional studios where they're still using a lot of DisplayPort. So there might be a case where you have to convert HDMI to DisplayPort. So we have this nice little simple box, uh, AC Convert HDDP. It is one HDMI in and two display ports, uh, two display port outputs. Uh, they're mirrored to each other, so it's the same uh, output on both sides. But if you do need to adapt or split HDMI into display port, we do also have this available. Uh, and again, you know, to keep up with the rest of our, our products, it is HDMI 2.1 and 18 gig capable. It looks like another question may have come in. Let's take a look. Um, he says, any idea to use audio only on the VGA Conflex wall plate? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, Tom, I'm not sure if you know that one. Uh, I don't off the top of my head. I would think that it should be no problem. It should be pretty easy to do. Uh, let yeah, me confirm. I'll, I'll jump in here, Jason. Uh, um, hey, everybody. My name is Tom Devine. Uh, thanks. Uh, great job so far, Jason. Um, yeah, I was just typing up this answer as well. So this is a great question. Um, VGA... Next to the VGA, you have a 3.5 millimeter plug-in that goes, embeds the audio into that VGA video signal. Um, it would be really nice if you had a phone or you have a source that's just audio that you could plug into that, and then that would be a part of your distributed system. Unfortunately, no, it does not work that way. So it's on VGA protocol that we would have to have a set, you know, have it wired to not go with the VGA signal, um, which is not the current way. We do have a dual gang wall plate in development right now. Um, I, I couldn't tell you exactly when that would be released, but that dual gang wall plate does have that audio port that you'd be able to um, 
distributed along with your system without having a VGA signal. So for our current um, wall plate, no, the VGA signal does not work. Uh, hope, hopefully that answers the question for you guys. No, cool. Thank you, Tom. That, that was good. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Great. And I did want to bring up that slide just so you guys could kind of see what he was talking about there. But okay, so let's jump back in and let's get back to the slide we were on. Sorry, bear with me just a second. And here we go. Okay, so this is kind of an idea of, um, or a diagram. And the idea here is this is a full-blown classroom type situation or conference room type situation with our product. So you have over here, you've got the HDMI wall plate that's uh, mounted to a podium. The end user is gonna plug in their laptop to HDMI. There's a category cable running under the carpet or through the walls or through the ceiling or hopefully through some conduit, hooking up to the CX62 where everybody else's laptop is hooked up as well. The outputs of the 62 run up to the audio amplifier. So we're able to power a pair of speakers from the audio amplifier and we're able to run our video through the audio amplifier into the projector. So this is kind of an idea of best case scenario, easiest to use. And what's great about this too, guys, is this is scalable. So whether you have a classroom that's, or a conference room, maybe that's kind of small like this, like what you see in the picture with seven or eight people, uh, maybe room for seven or eight people, this stuff is scalable. Uh, you can use a combination of uh, the Confrex products and our AV Pro Edge HDMI distribution products and matrix switches, and you can scale this up as big as you want to. So if you go from a small seven or eight person room like this to a big giant classroom in a college with 100 people, or maybe an office building where you know the CEO is giving a presentation to 5,000 employees, you know you could easily do that kind of scalability with with our products. So I do want to point that out as well. This isn't just necessarily for a single room, single zone type situation. You can get crazy with it if you want to. So just a simple diagram. You know, we've got 4K running through everything in this diagram. We've got a projector up here showing 4K and we've got a, another TV over here that's showing 4K if, if you need to, of course. And this is just with a few simple products. The wall plate being number one, the CX62 being number two, and the ramp being number three. Now you'll notice there's only three products here. From here, it's just wiring. Uh, and a little bit of programming if you're going to use this with a control system. But you'll notice that there's really no need here for a giant rack filled with amplifiers and all kinds of stuff. Uh, we can use three small products here and uh, build a really robust classroom system or meeting room uh, with, without a lot of complex, uh, you know, and, and very user friendly. Okay, I did want to mention uh, just one last time with our products. Um, you know, I've been there myself where. Uh, you know, we get down to the last hour and, you know, the, the place is going to open up tomorrow. We got to make sure everything's working. And, and um, you know, I just want you guys to know that, you know, if you're in a stressful situation like that, feel free, give us a call. Don't ever hesitate. Uh, we've got tech support now open till all hours of the night. Uh, we've, I've seen plenty of calls come in from other states on the West Coast, uh, opposite of where I live and, and other countries even. Um, so, you know, don't hesitate. Give us a call. We're, we're always happy to help you at tech support. And just another reminder too that um, you know we do have a 10-year warranty on all of our AV Pro Edge products. So if you do run into something where you might have a situation where something's not working, always give us a call. And, and if we do have one of those very rare cases where something's actually wrong, uh, we're going to take care of that as quickly for you as possible. We've uh, plenty of situations in the past where we've overnighted stuff to people and, and done RMAs, and, and you know our job is to help you guys and. and make this as headache free as possible. So if we can help you in any way and, and help your job <clears throat> go a little bit easier, uh, feel free to give us a call. That's why we're here. So just a quick summary, uh, you know, today's classrooms and huddle rooms have a, a huge variety of different resolutions of sources and displays and connector types. Uh, so getting to know all these different things uh, is super important. Um, not everybody's gonna understand how to use a system. Not everybody's gonna be technical. So, you know, these products are meant to be plug and play and really easy and all the auto sensing stuff. Uh, you know, we, we want this to be as easy as possible for the end user. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, what it really comes down to, um, I think Tom may have come up with this actually, and I really love it, but your customers should be focusing on their meetings and not the AV system. You know, if a teacher comes in, they're, due to, they're there to do business and give a presentation, or maybe you guys are in a meeting uh, with your boss or whatnot, you know, we shouldn't be spending time fiddling around, plugging things in and looking for adapters. We should be able to just come in, plug stuff in, everything should work, and we should be able to knock out the meeting and continue on with our day. 
So again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, this was one of the shorter ones, uh, so I'm glad that you guys were able to make it. But uh, you know, this is uh, this is a very exciting world for us uh, with with commercial and, and building classrooms and things. And we want to go on that journey with you. So if you guys have any questions for us, if if we can uh, clear any of this up for you, so feel free, reach out. Uh, hope you guys have a great holiday, and uh, you know, keep cranking out those those really nice jobs. And if there's anything we can do to help you, feel free to reach out. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.